Good evening, everybody. Tim from Gear Talk here. Changing up my trail camera review process a little bit. Unlike in the past, like last year, we did the review after just a few weeks of the camera being in the field. Unfortunately, that turned out to be a huge backfire as the camera that I reviewed failed constantly after that. It worked amazing for a while, then it wasn't working good uh, to the point that uh, I couldn't even get it replaced anymore. And I ended up getting a replacement camera and getting something completely different. So I wanted this year to make sure that we are looking at a camera and giving it its paces. Testing it in high signal area, low signal area, cold weather, warm weather, rain, storm, shine, everything. Here we go with the Spy Point Flex Review. Now before we dive too far into this video guys, um, this year I, I temporarily left the pro staff team for Spy Point uh, due to the things that happened last year with last year's camera. Um, for about two months I was not a part of the team and had a really really good conversation with one of the marketing managers uh, and she and I had a really really good talk about what I saw, what I felt in terms of quality of, of gear. So after that conversation she sort of left it out there if I wanted to come back onto the team or not and I took some time to think about it and I decided I am going to go back on to the pro staff team. Now this video may or may not be liked by them but I want this to be a honest review. I don't want it to be influenced by a pro staff position um, but I am pro staff, so I'm letting you know that up front, but I am going to give you the full honest review with sufficient time of this camera being tested so I know what problems I have run into. You're going to know them too, and you're going to know whether or not this would be a camera for you. Now on paper, this camera is a beast. And when I say a beast, I mean what it is should be doing and what it can do is actually pretty amazing. Let's take a look at some of these features that it has right now. It's a 33 megapixel camera. It runs on a dual SIM network. Uh, that's more for the states than it is for Canada and just basically what that means is that no more trying to figure out which camera you want whether it be Verizon or, or whatever other US companies. You just buy the camera and it's got the SIMs Two of them in the network in the camera already and it's set and ready to go and it will automatically flip between carriers wherever it's needed to do so it's got a stronger uh, receiver and antenna meaning that in low signal areas you will continue to get signal and improved signal over the other spy point cameras and in fact in areas where i have had to use extensions on cameras this camera was still able to get signal it's got a 0.3 trigger speed, sorry, a 0.3 second trigger speed. It's got 100 foot flash detection. It's got a test and format button right on the camera, meaning you can send snapshots right there on the spot, testing to make sure you got things working okay. Uh, and it is also GPS enabled. For anyone who's had a camera stolen, that's actually pretty good. Also, if you happen to put it in a new area and not 100% sure where that area is, in your spy point uh, map system, you'll be able to track it down in there as well. Now again, like I, uh, I was talking about, I put this camera in multiple locations during the various months it's been out. So I just pulled this camera today out of the woods. So it's been in the woods from May until December. Um, it first went into my no signal bare site area, a place where you normally need range extenders on cameras to get uh, at best 25% signal. Then I moved it to uh, the farm where I got my deer this year. Um, I had it at my uh, other original deer site, it was there for a bit, and then it was at my latest and last newest deer site. And uh, it's been there for probably two months, since October anyways. and. Um, it's been running there through the cold weather, just, just there to catch images of deer and stuff like that. So, uh, It's been through rain storms, it's been through snowstorms, it's been through 
intense heat, 40 degree weather here in New Brunswick during the summer. And uh, this way, again, we're, we're just getting, seeing how it's working through everything. This video, guys, I'm going to break this down into four key areas of review. We're going to go with quality of images and video. We're going to go with the ease of use and the features in the app. We're going to go with power consumption and then reliability and transmission. Now, with those key areas being focused at, this should give anybody who looks at this video a really good idea whether or not this will be a camera for them. So let's let's get into our first category, images and video quality. Um, it takes really, really sweet pictures. As you can see from these pictures here, very high quality, really great. It does transmit the full HD photo now to the app. That's huge. And we'll get more into that after. As to the video, now this is supposed to be 1080p video, which it does look great. Now one thing I am noticing though is that in my videos, I am getting some pixelation. Now I don't know if that's because of the video file they have uh, that it's coming out with and my players aren't reading it right, but I just, I just happen to notice and I've tried it in my CyberLink PowerDirector editing software, I've tried it in Windows Media Player, I've tried it on the CyberLink video player. <clears throat> I always get a little bit of glitching. Now we're going to test the sound quality. Now the Flex camera does have an internal microphone, however it's not going to be super sensitive. It is picking up sound. As you'll see in this video, it is off in this particular clip by about three to five seconds. However, in this following clip, the sound is spot on with the video. So I've seemed to get the odd one that isn't there. But again, it's not the strongest microphone, so you're not going to get great quality, but you are going to pick some things up. Now, the beeping you hear at the end of the video, I have yet to hear from the camera while I'm in the field, so I'm not sure if animals will hear that or not. Now, let's talk about the easy use and the features in the apps. So one of the huge updates to this is the updates themselves. From this point going forward, the Flex now will automatically tell you in the app an update is available and you can update it remotely now. Not something you could do previously unless you had tech support do it and that wasn't always guaranteed that it was going to be done or done right. This, however, works. I've done it twice now and it works great. It does it even in low signal, it still does the update. The way the photos work now, before they sent the really low res images, so on the app the images didn't look great at all. Now you're getting the full HD photo from here. The video can also be sent remotely and here's how this works, okay? A lot of people got a little confused by this so I'm going to clarify. So it sends like three images out of the video. I think it's the like a, 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 a clip from like a image from the first, I mean from the middle, image from the end, and it just it's got a few quick images and it shows you that. So you just get a rough idea of what the video is. Then you have to do an HD request. It'll then send you the full video right to your phone. Then you can then you can watch it. But you only get the full video by requesting it. Just similar to when you used to request the HD photos with the previous cameras. Now you're doing that with the videos. It, um, one thing I found is in the low signal areas, it would not work for me. Uh, once I went to higher signal areas, it worked fine, but my low signal areas, I could not get the HD images. Or sorry, not the HD images, but I could not get the HD video to download. With the GPS, uh, that's really great. Again, you can see it in the map system. Uh, also, with the, the uh, I mean, the, the app itself, I mean, it, it's a great app. You got the weather in there, so you know your, 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 your sunrise, sunsets, your little bit of the weather for the day. And you also get, uh, you know, you see your time. You go into the map system, you can see what's going on there. So th th this is really great. It works fine. You can order your images and your HD uh, video stuff. You can do all that in the app just like you normally could. It just runs on the exact same app. And uh, it's got a few extra settings, though, that you can look at in... Um, the camera settings, the photo settings, so you could flip it from photo to video at any time. 
The one thing it doesn't do though is it doesn't do the image and then video. So like a previous camera, like the uh, Link S Dark, you could take you'd have it set to take the image and then set, and then do a video. This doesn't do that. So it's either video or it's um, or the image. You can't have you can't have the hybrid of the two. You can do multi shots. You can do all that stuff just like before. And you can set your your resolution. You can set your your uh, sensitivity. Keep in mind. The sensitivity of this camera is higher than the other cameras. Even at a low setting, it's getting triggered by squirrels and everything else. So I have yet to have this in high setting. I'm scared to see what it would take. I'd probably see ghosts or something like that. But it, uh, on low setting, I'm, I'm getting everything that moves in front of it. All those settings are working. Everything's great. It updates and uh, works nicely. With the functionality of this, guys, so some, some things are a little bit different. You notice, you notice number one, the door opens up from the bottom kind of like um, well honestly it's very similar to uh, Wild Game Innovations cameras Tacticam camera you got your test button you got your power on this is your format button very interesting I had problems with this camera when I first got it and to the point I was ready to just throw it in a box I was done I read up in the manual about the formatting so this camera works a little bit differently than the other ones so what I mean by that is this the other cameras take a photo camera shuts down while it uploads a photo this partitions the SD card to two parts and will continue to run taking images even while it's uploading photos that's a really cool feature it means you're not missing stuff it has a downfall we'll touch on that in a little bit <clears throat> Um, you got the four your test button, so you can get your test photo. Um, you got your light that goes off. One thing about the functionality of this that I wasn't sure is in my videos, you hear a little beep, 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 beep. I don't know if the animals are hearing that or what, but I'm hearing it on, uh, in my videos. I don't know what that's from, but um, you got the bigger antenna. Um, the, this seems to be an issue with them not standing up. Um, I think there is uh, a rubber stopper you can get to help it. Uh, you could probably put like a rubber, uh, like just go buy an elastic and wrap it on and it should hold it up. So I could just wrap it around this piece right here and that should be fine. But uh, your lock for your cable locks comes through here instead of, and can also go through the back. So you can just put it to the tree and leave this open if you want, or you can lock the door and the back. One of the things that I, um, I wasn't real happy with was the thread, the female thread for a bracket. Now, generally, when you're using a bracket, uh, a lot of the times you have it like this, and this part sticks up, and you screw your camera down on top. Now, you can adjust your angle with your screw in, and then you turn your camera, you know, you can turn the camera like this to adjust your angle. With this new setup and how it works, the thread threads directly into the back, not up, but straight in. So now your camera's like this. So what happens is, is that your camera now twists in a circle. So you can't adjust your angle. You actually have to adjust the whole bracket. Um, some people might like that. I think it's a real pain in the ass. And I hope they change it on the next one. Also, when it comes to bare sights, that really makes the camera stick further out from the tree. Um, anybody who, who uses cameras around bare sights knows you want that camera to be as far away from the bears as possible and not very easy to see. When it's up against a tree, it's not doesn't stick out like it does if it's you know sticking out six inches from the tree like this, right? So alright, so Let's move into power consumption. Um, although it is improved, the battery life on this camera is horrible. So this camera is taking about 130 pictures since I put the new batteries in and changed its spot. Um, it is down to 49%. Now, that is a mix of settings. So that was originally set up to update every two hours to once the site was completely dead I no longer wanted to update and send a picture every two hours I just had it um, send whenever it was set off 
So that being said, uh, 130 pictures is down 51% of battery power. Now, that is not good. It should have probably in the 90s still, easily. There are ways to manage it, however. So, for example, um, changing the settings on how often the camera updates, meaning how often it sends, it connects and sends. When your camera is connecting, and this goes with any cellular camera, the time it uses the most power is when it connects cellular. The better the, 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 better the signal, easier it is to connect, but also how many images it's sending. If you've got it updated to send on every single picture, it has, it used to, you know, cameras would shut down, connect, send, shut off, turn the camera back on, and away you go. This one, it's still running, so it's running two things now, right? So it's running the camera and doing the images while it's updating the images as well. Uh, that becomes very consuming with power on this, okay? Now, when I was uh, running this camera at the farm and it was just going through a ton of pictures all the time, um, I set it to go every two hours. It made a massive difference on how long my batteries lasted. And the one thing I noticed about the battery uh, meter and, and, it, and, and the display on the phone is that once the battery had some time, like once the camera had like some downtime, and uh, the next time it would update, I would notice that it would recover some battery power. So I don't know if what's happening is, is it's generating um, an estimate of power and then it gets like an update from the battery saying, hey, you know, we've actually got more, more reserve power. So anyways, it just, it will correct itself. It's not always 100% accurate, I found, but as it's going and the busier the camera gets, once it gets a moment to shut down and relax, it seems to update the battery uh, level, usually get two or three percent back. So, um, so, so that's it with that, guys. Uh, managing, you can manage the power consumption um, by managing how your camera works. That will help go a long way. Now, also, one thing is, is you can now buy the solar panel and the battery to go with it. For, you know, when you've got almost unlimited energy source. That goes a long way to helping this particular camera work. I haven't done it. I haven't bought it. I haven't done anything like that with it yet. Uh, but I have. I am sh knowing that other cameras that have had the solar, the solar helps a lot with the longevity of your battery and and re recovering some energy. So let's talk about one of the most key components when dealing with a cellular trail camera. It doesn't matter. This next little part doesn't matter what camera company you're using, all right. Signal is vital. You gotta have a good signal, and you gotta have the carrier to do it. The great thing about the Flex is, is it's dual SIM, so it'll connect to whichever carrier is there. In Canada, um, we we only have really two carriers, and they're both nationwide, so you're you're covered. The great thing that really impressed me with this camera is its ability in my zero signal area. My bear site. You've all seen me hunting there. I've gotten some nice bears out of there and I've had a lot of activity. And this camera this year showed me a lot of activity and it worked well. In a site where I normally put my Link Micro SLTE, I have to put a range extender on it. So a 10 foot line that goes up the tree with a little antenna on it. It's the only way I can get signal to a camera in that site, and at best, 25%, at best. So we miss a lot of images because it's not always going to connect. Storm days, sunny days, it, it affects it all, uh, leaves in the trees, I mean, it's, it's, it's a poor area. So we run multiple cameras out there, one non, a couple of non-cells, and the cellular. The great thing about this camera was, is in that location without a range extender, it got signal. Now you can put a range extender on here guys. Uh, one thing um, that you got to be weary of, okay? Not weary, but you just got to pay attention to. This camera setup is a little bit different. On the antenna, it is the male component now, where on previous ones it was female. And the female is on the camera. It was the other way around on the other cameras, uh, where the 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 little uh, pin was on the camera itself and not on the antenna. So you have to differentiate that when you go to buy a range extender. You're probably not going to need it though. This antenna 
Works fantastic. Um, so at the bare site, it got 25%, sometimes even 50% signal. Um, that was actually only a couple of times. It was pretty rare, but it did work because um, when you're dealing with this new gen camera that they claim they listen to all the problems they've had with all the other cameras and they work this one to fix it all that. To be honest with you, they did. The antenna transmission, fantastic. I have no complaints about that at all. I haven't really come across any issues. Um, I've yet to see that 100% signal though, uh, anywhere, um, even in high, but a lot of the areas that, you know, we're in the woods, so not all areas are going to be 100% signal. Um, but uh, all the areas I've been at, they've all got some form, a little bit of uh, signal trouble. So this thing has worked flawlessly for me. I don't feel I'm missing any images from it. It's ship sending them off. It's communicating. It's never miscommunication. It's just worked, which is what you want. It's reliable. In the past, some other cameras, there's been difficulty, but this one has been reliable for me. All right, guys, so we're going to wrap this video up here. I'm going to give you my final thoughts. Um, this camera was to be the next step in the legacy of Spy Point. And you know what? Almost. Almost. If the power consumption wasn't so horrible in this camera, um, you know, on a standard upload every image, if that power consumption wasn't so terrible, um, then this camera would actually be a slam dunk. I mean, it's almost a slam dunk, guys. Like, you know, the power consumption, you don't want to burn through batteries that fast. It gets expensive. Uh, if you invest a little money and buy the solar panel and the, and the rechargeable battery, you know what? That goes a long way to, to, to helping. Um, but, again, it's, it's, it's a larger part of an investment on an already $200 camera. Um, but... Image quality, trigger speed, resolution of, of, of the images and the video. Honestly, the, the fact that it is actually more reliable. I have been impressed with this. I was not impressed at first, and Trevor would, could tell anybody. I might have done a little bit of cursor trying to figure it out, but then I read the manual, figured the things I need to figure out, and it started working. Now we just got to get the, they're aware of the power consumption problem. This is not anything new. It's actually something I had in conversation. So it's something they're working on, and I am looking forward to seeing how they build on next year's model of camera and what they're going to take away um, and fix and, and, and improve on. Because this was a good innovation. It is a good step in the right direction for quality just a few tweaks and i think we could get things really really going well so um overall guys out of 10 i give this probably a six and a half a seven camera out of 10 um you know it's 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 going to do the job just be mindful of your power consumption and how you run the camera and for the most part you should be okay just budget a little extra money for batteries so anyways guys that is it for this episode of gear talk with the Flex by SpyPoint. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have yourselves a great day.